はい。We're good. All right. So、uh, starting a new game in this in this game is、uh, it takes like forever and it's really boring and it's a long cutscene. So we're not going to do that. We just actually load a save to start the speedrun. So、uh, we're going to be starting from this、uh, speedrun start save. So three, two, one, go. All right. So the game's already broken. I now have infinite stamina, which is pretty useful. And I can also jump while sprinting, which lets me just kind of skip over this guy and get on the walls of Helgen, which is pretty nice. Now,、uh, unfortunately, my hands are still bound, so I can't actually just leave and、uh, actually finish the run. But I'll make a quick save there. We'll get back to that. This very start of the run is going to be a little bit confusing because it makes no dang sense. But just kind of bear with me. I'll try to explain it.、Uh, this is the end of Helgen Cave. This is where you emerge once you've gone through Helgen. I'm going to go up here and make a save, and I'm going to go back to the quick save I made. Just keep that in mind. We'll get back to it. So this is where you're supposed to go. I'm going to skip some dialogue with quick save and quick load. You're going to be seeing that a lot. You can also bump into people to skip dialogue. And I can jump to skip an animation, and I need these items. I'm going to make a new save, and I'm going to go back to the save that I made right in front of Helgen Cave. Now, there's a really, really stupid glitch that I'm going to do here.、Uh, I'm going to walk into Helgen Cave and pause at the exact same time. It's extremely precise. It's probably frame perfect. We'll just go with that. Yeah,、sure. totally. Why not?、Uh, there we go. And now the menu is open, but I can't see it. And I can't load a game, but I can quick、uh, quit to the main menu. And then load up the save that I made in Helgen Keep. That's going to load up that character, and then trigger the transition to the end of Helgen Cave. And now the character with his hands unbound is left Helgen Cave, and we don't have to run through it at all. Yeah. And we can go finish the game.、Uh, that's called a load warp. It was accidentally found by Bubbles and Oblivion, and I found a way to do it in Skyrim, and somebody else found a way to do it in Fallout 4. So Bethesda is nothing if not consistent. <laughs> Consistently broken, which is wonderful. Now,、uh, when I made this character, I made a high elf, just because your speed is、uh, dictated by your character's height, just like Oblivion, I believe. And、uh, high elves happen to be the fastest or the tallest race, which makes them the fastest. Also, this is perfectly safe. Don't worry; it's impossible to die to those falls. So I'm going to need a bunch of gold in order to fund this journey through the wonderful world of Skyrim. And luckily, I'm really good at like speech and talking to people and convincing people to give me their gold. So I'm going to go up here and、uh, just kind of trick him into giving me all of his gold by selling his own. Oh, I missed. There we go. Selling his own inventory to me, and then I'm going to just refresh his inventory and do it again. So now you see I have 1,300 gold, and that's plenty enough to just completely. Get everywhere I need to be. It's really silly. You just kind of basically、uh, keep the sell menu open while you're looking at their inventory, and you just sell their inventory to them. <laughs> It's really easy. And then you can also, if you、uh, if you make a save, you piss them off and reload that save. Then the next time you open up their inventory, it'll be reset. So they have all their gold again, and you can do it again. Vendors are pretty magical in this game. So next up, I need I need to go all the way over there. Running, as you see, is kind of boring and slow. So this is a trick you can actually try in real life. I'm sure it'll work. Just probably.、Uh, there's this handy guard up here. All you need to do is just kind of you know walk over, give him like a little love tap on the shoulder, and then just throw a bunch of gold in his face, and he will just take you exactly where you need to go. <laughs> try it in real life. I'm sure it'll work. Probably not going to get you arrested. All right, so I actually got that fast travel point, but I don't need to go there yet. So I'm going to use our nice, friendly carriage man here to go to Solitude and pick up a fast travel point for later. If you're familiar with the main quest of Skyrim, you're probably a little bit confused why I'm going to Solitude because normally you don't come here until much later on in the game.、Um, you might go here if you want to do like the Civil War for the Imperials or something. But that's slow and boring. We're not going to do that. We're going to make our way up to the Thalmor Embassy, which normally you have to actually like 
get teleported in as part of a quest because it's always completely sealed off. There's no way in or out. Unless you happen to have a bucket. Because buckets are kind of a magical little item that they decided to include. You think, you know, all these like staves and enchanted swords and everything are magical? Nah. Buckets, man. Buckets are where it's at. So, a nice little stroll up here. The Thelmore Embassy is just over here. Uh, you may notice that I'm just mashing spacebar, uh, mostly because I'm bored, because I'm just holding W. But also, it's like very, very tiny amount faster, like 1% faster, just to mash space. And you got to save all of the frames. All right, so now we're here. This, you think this is a wall. But um, actually, if we get in the right spot, we can just kind of go through. And now we're in the Thalmor <laughs> Embassy, where we're not supposed to be for like another 10 hours or something. These people are kind of mad about it, but they'll be fine. Uh, in this chest, I missed the chest. There we go. There is a pretty useful piece of paper. That piece of paper you're not supposed to pick up for a long time, but I'm going to pick it up now. That's actually going to trigger the quest Diplomatic Immunity, and that skips everything that goes on before it. So I don't have to like fight my first dragon. I don't have to... Uh, like learn about being a dragonborn. I don't have to meet the graybeards. I don't have to investigate the dragons coming back. All that, and pfft, I just picked up a piece of paper. That's all I need. Sound familiar? I really like paper. I, fortunately, I won't have to do it 17 times. Now, unfortunately, that's a very valuable horse and I need to punch it because fast. Don't worry, it'll be fine. It actually doesn't care. Like it doesn't even react. And that warps me into Riften faster. Our actual objective now is supposed to be to go talk to Delphine. We don't have to do that. We can just go straight to our boy, Esbern, who's going to teach us about the blades or something. I don't know, lore. Also, you can just kind of jump around that gap. Since I'm always moving at sprint speed and I can still jump, you can kind of make really long jumps that you're not supposed to be able to. Uh, this is the Thieves Guild. They're I'm just going to borrow a bucket from them. It's fine. They don't mind. And there's a whole bunch of uh, Thalmor around here that are trying to find Esbern, so getting out of here is going to be kind of annoying normally. But we have another strat. And here's Esbern. He takes a while to open his door, so we can do like one or two donations while we're waiting for him. Well, I do indeed have two donations. We have $25 from TJP7154. Great job with SGDQ so far. Elder Scrolls speedruns are certainly without borders. Skyrim's my favorite. Timotheus Wallan Katsegel Varikuv, SGDQ Wo Wallan Faran Fa, Doctors Without Borders. Sure. That was Dragon Tongue. Of course. Of course. Sure. <laughs> we have $100 from Unwise. This will be my donation for SGDQ this year. I'm working all week long, but in the precious few hours off, I'll drop in and see what's up. This goes to Vert's soundtrack on Necrodancer. He's a true modern VGM hero. Keep up the good work, y'all. All right, so we talked to Esbern, and uh, we can just kind of go back to this save that we made right in front of Helkin Cave. Because, you know, we can work out again. First try, easiest game of my life. Nice. And now that we load up the save, whoops, this one, back in the right way, Warrens, it's just going to pull both me and Esbern straight out we don't have to run all the way back. We don't have to deal with Thalmor. We can just leave if he'd get out of my way, please. Yeah, the old route used to use a uh, platter to go through a wall or it used a bucket. Yeah, that's slow. We can just literally warp out. So right now you're supposed to take Esbern to Riverwood to go meet Delphine, and then they tell you to go somewhere. Uh, it actually works out better for us if we go straight to Skyhaven Temple, which is the uh, objective that they're going to tell us to go to. That's because we, we're eventually going to need Esbern and Delphine there at Skyhaven Temple. And they're terrible. They are just awful NPCs. But if we discover the fast travel point before, and then we just fast travel with them there, then they'll just appear easy peasy, and we don't have to worry about it. And it also turns out that doing this kind of gives us a more favorable in-game time for a bunch of events that we need to do later. Because there are a number of... Uh, NPC schedules and things that we need to have set in certain places to actually uh, do things optimally. 
And there's one, there's one really important thing for Grayscale. May yep. he come back one day. And the rest of this is just running. So we can do a couple more. All right, but first I would like to mention Power Up Audio, who is providing audio for this entire event. They are an indie sound studio from Vancouver, Canada, and, has work and have worked on such games as Crypt of the Necrodancer, Battle Chasers, Night War, and their entire team is here at SGDQ. And they've also adjusted my mic a couple of times. Great job, guys. <laughs> Check out their work at PowerUpAudio.com. Apparently I'm so good I don't need them to adjust my mic. I just got it first try. So good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll just need to keep practicing then. <laughs> so uh, here we are at Carspire. There's a bunch of enemies, but we're just going to ignore them. And up here is a puzzle. You're supposed to like, it's the, it's the preschool puzzle. You need to match the tiles. But you can also just parkour over it because parkour is much cooler. There we go. We're up. Oh, no. There, all right, there you go. <laughs> Easy. And now that we get that thing, we can teleport back and actually take Esbern to Riverwood. Fortunately, he does, well, he does actually just follow us here when we do it. And this is supposed to be a long conversation. Uh, one thing you can do to skip conversations in addition to quick, quick saving, quick loading is actually entering and exiting areas repeatedly. So I'm going to use a wait to get them to start the conversation, and I'm just going to leave. Use another wait and wait a couple seconds. And then they're kind of right at the end of their conversation. So I can just wait for the quest update and then leave. And that skips doing the whole dialogue with them. And now we can just go straight back to Sky Heaven Temple. And in theory, use a wait and he just appears right here. There we go. Oh. And now this door takes a long time to open, so we're actually just going to leave and do something else while it's opening. <laughs> so there we were, cutting our, or spilling some blood on the ground to open the door that was nowhere near us. But, eh, it's fine. We can just leave. Uh, one of the things I'm going to need in a little bit is an Elder Scroll. And the first objective uh, that you need to get an Elder Scroll is you need help from our buddy Septimus Cygnus who has an item, well, technically a couple items, that we're going to need to actually get to an Elder Scroll. And we're just going to kind of run here. First of all, this incredibly dangerous looking drop is actually the most consistent strat in the entire game. Because there's, you see there's a foot of water, so it's perfectly safe. <laughs> and we're just going to make our way over to Septimus so we can do some more. We have a $50 donation from L-E-L-Y-K-L-33-T. Ellie Cleet? Not sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, love this event. Look forward to it every time. Keep up the good work, and go Hokies. We have $100 from IV253. Fallout is my favorite anime. The prequel is okay, too. Sure. Sure. I think it's called Scrolls of the Old People or something. Also, save the animals, you animals. We have $50 from Doc Phelps 1986. I'm a man of my word. I have put hundreds of hours into the Elder Scrolls series, and seeing them get wrecked in mere minutes is a thing to behold. Thanks to the runners and everyone behind the scenes making this amazing event possible. All right, so Septimus over here. He's got an item we need. So, unfortunately, he detected me because Skyrim stealth mechanics are literally perfect and not completely arbitrary in RNG and dumb. So we're just going to go over here. And there we go. First try. First try. <laughs> Normally you have to talk to him for like a minute before he gives it to you. It's really dumb, but we can just do that. He's supposed to give you two items, but we're not going to need one of them for reasons you'll see in a little bit. Anyway, so here's Skyhaven Temple. Uh, here's where you're supposed to learn about Dragonrend and how to actually like defeat Alduin. But we're just going to kind of skip over some stuff. There is a really useful item over here that I need. This over here is Dragonbane. So I'm going to pick it up. And 
Now I have two Dragon Banes. <laughs> because Skyrim. Don't worry about it. <laughs> now I need to skip over some dialogue. So does it this is supposed to be a really long conversation, but it's already over. So that's convenient. Right. Right. So I need to do two fights in this game. Both of them are against Elduin. So having two Dragon Banes makes it a lot easier. We used to fight, at, or we used to be an orc, which has an ability called Berserker Rage, which, which makes fights like completely free. But now that we can actually duplicate Dragon Bane, it's reasonable to uh, actually be a high elf, which kind of sucks at combat. But yeah, we got. I got two swords. So normally for the main quest to actually get the Elder Scroll, you need to like go through one of, I think you can go through a few different dungeons. They're really long, they're really difficult, they've got a lot of enemies, and then you go into this really big, beautiful area called Blackreach that everybody loves and looks really cool, and it's completely empty and utterly useless, and we're not going to go there. Instead, we're just going to go straight to Mazark Tower, which contains the, oh god, this guy's going to talk to me. No, I'm antisocial, I don't want to. Uh, we're just going to go straight to Mazark Tower, which contains the Elder Scroll. And uh, there's this kind of recurring theme about, you know, walls just being suggestions in the Elder Scrolls game. It may or may not be true in this one as well. We just have a little bit more running. We can do another donation before we get there. So I would like to mention Save Point who has provided two entire rooms full of arcade and pinball machines at SGDQ 2016. The main thing SavePoint does is that they buy, sell, and rent arcade and pinball machines, and they also buy, sell, and trade video games and import video games. If you'd like to check them out, you can go to www.savepointreloaded.com. So there's actually no uh, map marker up here because you're not supposed to go in this way. It's actually completely sealed off. The doors are locked. You can only open them from the inside. There's absolutely no way in whatsoever, right? Well, it turns out you can just kind of go in this corner and just like, just wiggle. Just wiggle a little bit. Just do a little wiggle. And then you're through. And that's it. <laughs> you just use the elevator. And now we have another incredibly Incredibly difficult puzzle. <laughs> okay, if I actually keep mashing it, it can soft lock because Skyrim. <laughs> so I do actually have to be careful with that one button press. And. Alright, we did it. We solved the puzzle. And there's also this incredibly important bucket that you need to solve the puzzle with. Just trust me. Bucket's very important. And we have another scroll. So now that we have this, we have everything that we need to actually go and meet the Greybeards and progress with the quest to actually uh, get Dragonrend and start beating up Elduin. And the fastest way to get there is with a horse. So I need a horse. This one's probably for sale, but it's OK. I can just jump on it and steal it. <laughs> and this up here, well, first of all, I'm going to get another infinite sprint glitch, this time with my horse. So he also can do infinite sprint because he's jealous of me or something and this part is probably the least broken part of the run because this is something that literally everybody does casually you know and the when todd howard was presenting skyrim he says you see that mountain you can climb it and it turns out yes it's true if you just get on a horse and just run up it it'll just kind of go flying up the side because skyrim horses this is perfectly normal. Everybody did it. So there's supposed to be like thousands of steps to get up to High Rothgar. Or you can just, you know, go up the side. This horse is kind of slow. Um, horses in this game are really weird. They're, they actually have like the same base speed always, no matter what. But how they clip up mountains is kind of random and weird, and it doesn't make any sense. And I'm trying to quick save and quick load to get a better horse, which doesn't make any sense, but it's a Bethesda game. 
you know, things, these things happen. Unfortunately, this one was kind of slow, but it doesn't matter too much. I just need to get up here. Now, since I completely skipped over the first quest of meeting the Greybeards, uh, the front door to High Rothgar is locked, and there's no way to unlock it unless I think you can still go back and do those quests, probably. But that's really slow. Uh, fortunately, the back door is always unlocked. So we can just kind of go around and come in the back door, just like we did with Mazark. Nice and easy. This horse just uh, doesn't really care about rocks. This is normal. Now, we already punched the horse. Now we're going to hurt the horse again. Sorry. It's all in the interest of speed. And now we get to meet Arangir. Uh This conversation, if I do the wrong thing, will end up going very terribly because he gets really mad at me. So I just need to press the right buttons. Where did you learn of that? They have all... Have you learned nothing? If you happen to like make, or if you do a quick save, quick load while you're in here, your horse will disappear. And I still need my horse because I still need to get to the top of the mountain. So it's very important that I don't mess up. Fortunately, we did it. Another another thing that horses are really good for is uh, learning shouts. Turns out that horse is also, I guess, a dragonborn because. Arangir shouts out a bunch of words, and the horse is just going to read them and learn it. And he learns them way faster than if you were on foot. Sure. Sure. I actually have to make sure to do a quick save quick load there, so I actually unlock clear skies. If I don't, I'll soft lock at the very end, which is not ideal. Because normally you absolutely have to have clear skies in order to get up this mountain, or you can just use a horse. This horse is actually pretty good. And it's just kind of flying straight up, which is nice. And now I don't know where I am. I'm inside the mountain somewhere. Uh, all right, there we go. <laughs> just, just digging a mine or something, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so we need to get a little extra height so we can get up here. And now we're going to go on up and meet Mario. Mario is in this game. He's a very friendly dragon. There he is. I recognize him from Super Metroid. <laughs> so unfortunately, he gets really mad at me when I call him Mario, because that's not, not his real name in this. So he might yell at me a little bit. In case, you're wondering, in case you're wondering what that means, Parthenax is actually voiced by Charles Martinet. Yeah. So, all right, he stopped screaming. And now he just wants us to read some fire on him, just because he's into that or something. Hashtag just dragon things. So we'll oblige. And now he's basically going to go tell us to go get an Elder Scroll so we can lead it, so we can read it. And uh, it'll take us back in time to when the original heroes beat up Alduin and they used Dragonrend, and then we'd be able to learn from them. Uh, whoops. But uh, I'm really tired. You know, I've been commentating like all of these Elder Scrolls games. I think I just I need a little break. So I'm, I'm going to set up a glitch here, which looks weird, but. Trust me, it's worth it. And then, I think I'm just going to go get married. I think, yeah, you know what? I think that's, I think that's the proper thing that you do in the speed run, right? Let's, let's go over here and learn about marriage from our pal Maramel. Because I don't want to sit through a cutscene. Cutscenes are boring. Let's just learn about marriage instead. Can I have a wedding at the temple? Yes, I'd love to buy an amulet of Mara. Oh, that's an alto wine. All right, I'm also <laughs> getting drunk, apparently. So, all right, I got drunk. I threw a bunch of money at this guy. Let's get married. All right, I'm ready. 
All right, our wedding is ready. It's going to be held in a day, so let's just fast travel away and back again to actually speed up time. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> Love my life. He's just waiting. Oh, no, he's not waiting there. It glitched out. Hold on. Hello? Oh, I love when this happens. Mercurio, are you broken? You at our wedding. Apparently. All right, I think the game uh, decided to not actually progress into the next stage, so we got to do a little more waiting to make sure it actually goes on. All right, now we'll use another way. So unfortunately, that ruins all the in-game time manipulation we had, but oh well, it's not that big a deal. Marriage is more important, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to read the Elder Scroll because, right, I had to do that. I forgot. All right, let's get married. Wait. Hold on. What's going on? No, don't teleport me away. Oh, great. I failed to attend your wedding ceremony. <laughs> Dang. But fortunately, I now have control in this cutscene where you normally have to sit. And now I'm currently, I guess, in the wedding chapel looking at the Elder Scroll in the future while I'm in the past also fighting this dragon that was from 5,000 years ago or whatever, and I, I don't know. It's fine. Uh, the point is I now have control in this cutscene where you're supposed to watch for like five minutes, and I can skip dialogue, and that makes this incredibly shorter. And we don't have a nice comfy uh, cutscene anymore. <laughs> for shame. So the, uh, the run also used to be in Spanish, and that was pretty much just for this. Yeah, this cutscene was like, you know, five minutes long, and Spanish was the fastest language for that. Now technically French is actually faster, but it's only a second, and I was too lazy to download the files, so you get English, sorry. <laughs> I never agree. So, yeah, this is clearly much faster, since they're not really getting a chance to say anything at all. And Alduin up there... I can't really, like, talk to him to skip his dialogue. Uh, fortunately, what I can do is actually just fast travel away and back. And that's going to advance the plot a whole bunch. So we're just leaving while we're staring at the past. It's kind of funny. You can actually just walk around the world while you're still in the, the past. And everything is perfectly normal. But there we go. We learned Dragon Rend. So I'm going to go ahead and favorite a few things. And I'll be using those shouts for the rest of the run. Only those three, that's it. That's all you need. If I fast travel way too soon here, the game will soft lock. So that's fun. <laughs> Just go back, skip some more dialogue. Uh, if we get lucky, something funny will happen. Oh, that dragon <laughs> fell through the ground. <laughs> that's not what I was talking about, but all right. All right, she took a nap. Rip. No, oh, oh, Whoa. wait, no, I uh, want to skip <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> oh, he's back down. He's fine. <laughs> I wanted to skip his dialogue, but he was 40 feet in the air. What the hell? Uh, Skyrim. So what can happen there is they actually clip into Alduin's hitbox and they go flying around the thing and waste a ton of time but luckily that didn't happen but now we have actually the hardest part of the run uh this is the aldo in one fight uh since we're high elves we kind of suck at combat so i do this requires a lot of very precise uh positioning and also use of this infinite power attack come on use the power attack there we go so if you just like mash your mouse click while the power attack's going off, it just won't use stamina. So I can just kind of continually power attack forever. And I'm positioned to actually bait out his wing attacks, because those do significantly less damage than everything else. And I'm also avoiding getting staggered, so I don't get a glitch where I just can't shout. And there we go, he's done. I need you to stay where you are, Parthenax. Nope, you're gonna fly away. Parthenax, please land. Where are you going? All right, he's going over here. Stay there. All right. So that concludes the exciting part of the speedrun. Now we have politics. 
And it's unfortunately not like Morrowind politics. This is like literal boring politics. So apparently Alduin escaped, even though he was just like passed out there after we beat him up. But we need to capture a dragon in this guy's backyard. And he doesn't want us to actually do that unless we stop the current civil war that's going on. So we're going to have to like convince both sides to stop because the end of the world is happening. What the heck? Why are you fighting? But it takes a little more convincing than that. So this is a conversation you're supposed to get like right at the very beginning of the game, but we never actually came here, so we're doing it now. And he's going to give us the first quest, which is getting the Dragonstone. But we don't actually need to do that because we skipped over it completely. So, this guy, we're just going to ask to use his backyard, and he says, yo, there's a war going on, get with the picture. And I'm just like, yo, there's the end of the world going on, come on. But, yeah, he won't let up unless we actually stop the Civil War, at least temporarily. So that's what we're up to now. If I, if the uh, in-game time manipulation hadn't been messed up, then we could save a little bit of time here, but it's not too bad. So High Rothgar is still locked because, you know, we never actually went out there. But we can just go through the wall and then fly up this thing. And now we're at the back door. <laughs> and all right, he's over here, which is pretty good. So the first rule of politics, get somebody else to do your job for you. We're going to convince this guy to hold a peace council so we don't actually have to do anything because that's how you politics. Now we need to convince the two sides to actually come over. Uh, where is the guard? There he is. Hey. So instead of a love tap, you can also breathe fire and then throw money at them. It also works. You can try that out in real life too. This is the leader of the Imperials. They're like... No, fancy pants empire that came from the lower regions. And in order to convince him to come to the Peace Council to make peace with his mortal enemy, you just say, well, you can't afford to snub the Greybeards. It's really rude, dude. Come on. And he's like, all right, cool. I'll come to the Peace Council and make peace with my mortal enemies. Politics. And we need to make our way over to the other side. Uh, last time we're going to use the carriage. Good old Boyam bo bo uh, name. Last time we're going to make use of his services. Head over to Windhelm. And these guards are actually really cold, so sometimes they don't mind getting like hot fire breathed on them. But this one was, this one was actually mad and took us where we want to go, which is ideal. Sometimes they just kind of like forgive you, because they're like, "Oh, that feels good." <laughs> so now there's this guy who's fighting for independence against the empire. So obviously, it's going to be really hard to convince them to come make peace, right? Well, you can also just say, well, the other side is coming. Come on. And he's like, all right, cool. I'll come to the Peace Council. Politics. That, this feels no more, no less complicated than real world politics, to be honest. And once again, we need to get back into Rothgar. Trusty Bucket is right here. No. Shout out to Rexy who fails this like 400 times in a row every time. <laughs> and he's cursed everybody so they'll no longer get it first try every time. <sighs> Man, this looks like me doing it. Dang, dude. It's all Rexy's fault, I'm sure. So this is the hypest part of the run. This is the Peace Council. Normally this is like 15 minutes of just people talking to each other. But we can quick save and quick load. Therefore, it's only five minutes of me spamming quick save and quick load. Much better. And I'm just going to be doing this for a while, so you can probably start reading donations. <laughs> we have an anonymous $100 donation. 
I love you. Thanks. <laughs> we have a $100 donation from Man Blair Pig. Consider this a wedding gift, or not. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't actually get married. <laughs> Oops. We have a $50 donation from Space Hilbert. Pretend I said something witty. <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? Great. We have a $50 donation from Mocha. Thanks to the runners and all of the people that help to make this happen every year. This is my fourth time watching these events, and they get better every year. My mom is a vegan, so save those animals. We have $50 from Cartesia LD. Been having a great time watching the GDQ, just like always. These runners make everything look easy peasy and make me hope that one day I may beat any of the games in half the time. One cent goes to saving the animals and $49.99 for a file name because that's a bigger make large huge deal. I guess that's the thing now. We have $50 from Masumar Wasumaru. Can't wait to see Fallout 3 be crushed in 25 minutes and Fallout 4 be destroyed in a mere hour. Add Victoria and kill those mutated animals. So there are a few lines that you can't actually skip. If you do, it just kind of repeats the first part over and over and over again. But fortunately, we can actually like do this stupid thing with these hands that just appear in midair. It's kind of entertaining, at least. We're far from done, though. You can keep going. I'd like to give a shout out to World9 Gaming, who is the premier computer, console, and arcade gaming provider for events across the Midwest since 2005. They have dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and an expansive collection of over 2,000 games and 100 consoles. They have up to 20 PCs with all of the top games installed and over 25 classic arcade machines. For more information on booking upcoming events, check out world9gaming.com. <laughs> I'm doing my run. We have a $25 donation from Montpente. This event is the best event of the year. Thanks to everyone participating in it. Runners, announcers, and techs. Thank you all for making my week way more fun. Damned Imperial Lies. This line, if you skip it, it just goes completely silent. So I just use it for a cue on when the next guy is going to start talking. And uh, if you actually tab out of this conversation like you do with the rest, he actually gets really mad, and the conversation or the whole council goes on for like another two minutes while you try to make him not mad. But it's kind of funny. They ask for your input like two times, and most of the time you just give the like jerk answer of just I don't care or whatever. And this is the only one where you actually have to be nice to them, and apparently that's good enough for them. Fortunately, we are almost done with this. Everybody has agreed that it's totally fine. Also, this is probably the hardest part to do optimally, because you have to start quick save and quick loading like right as the line starts every single time. So there was a couple small mistakes and stuff, and that can actually be done a lot faster. But whatever, politics, we got through it. Now we get to talk to, to uh, good old Esbern as he talks about cross-referencing and research and stuff and lots of other things that you put in video games, obviously. But, all right, we learned about Odeving. So we're done with the boring politics. That's all we needed to do. Now we can go back to action, like capturing dragons. That's got to be cool, right? So um, <clears throat> there's a lot of really stupid kind of things that you can do in this game. And a lot of strats have just come from, you know, asking stupid questions. Like, what if we get married before we go and do the cutscene? Seems like a reasonable strat. Also, this guy is sleeping because it's 8 p.m. I think he wakes up at like 4. So one of the actual things that somebody suggested is we used to run out and uh, run out to the balcony and actually use the shout to call... Uh, Odeving, but it turns out you can just kind of shout while indoors and it still works. I guess he just like hears you. I guess he's like pressing against the wall just like, oh, oh they called me. 
And that lets you do a setup where you use a wait here and you can actually shout him as soon as you go through this door. And then you don't actually have to aim or anything like that. And the guard is alive while in midair, which means he gets to swipe him. That loses, loses a little bit of time. Sometimes when he's here, he like just he just goes through the ceiling. It's kind of adorable. Fight me. All right, I'm scared. Never mind. Don't fight me. What if I just let them do it for me? All right, sick. They captured him for me. I don't have to do anything. I mean, no, I captured him. I am the Dragonborn. That's it's all me, right? Just like the politics, I did all the talking. It's all me. And so you convince him to actually take you to the uh, Skaldofen, which will take you to where Alduin is hiding. So we need to use a couple weights. Skip his dialogue. And there's this really janky animation of you flying off on him. It looks really dumb, so you can just travel away and skip it, and it saves a bunch of time it's really long and stupid. And up here is called often. This is the second last area in the game and it's this really long dungeon that's really difficult and is really got a lot of enemies. Um, I'm not going to do that though because I've got a bucket. <laughs> and buckets are magical. <laughs> oh. oh no, I hit the wall. Oh, the dragon is trolling. Whoop. Come on, stop eating my down inputs. All right, we just need to get like halfway and then we can do a backup. Or we can fall off because I'm dumb. It's also <laughs> an option, in case you didn't know. All right, it's a quick save. Nice, good. So if you're really lucky, you can just kind of uh, go straight up to the top, but Got kind of unlucky with the dragon, and my positioning was slightly off, but it's all right. We just do a nice, slow, steady bucket. Slow and steady wins the race. And hello. Here we go. We're on top. We completely skipped over the dungeon. And we can just leave. That saves a significant amount of time. Get wrecked. <laughs> you can actually just run in, and he won't be able to close it in time, but it's just kind of funny to shoot him. So here we are, solving guard. Looks very pretty. We're literally dead, I guess, because this is the afterlife. I guess? I don't know. Sure. Lore. Lore happens. Alduin is in the afterlife. He's flying around, but we can't actually kill him because he's invincible because reasons. Plot armor or something. So we need to go enlist the help of the three heroes that we saw in the cut scene to actually go uh, help us fight him. But first, we have to fight the actual proper final boss, which is soon. And if he wants to, he can completely wreck me. But he shouldn't, because he's usually nice. All right, here we go. Epic fight. What brings you away? All right, so he stood still, which means I actually hit him with a shout, which means that's it. It's already over. If he wants, he can dodge your shout, and then you have to hit him like an, an additional five times, and he can just kind of like insta-kill you with like one hit and then an insta-kill attack, which is kind of terrible. <laughs> so we're almost at the last fight. We just need to get these guys to come. They're really slow. So we're just gonna kind of go in and out of this door repeatedly, and they'll just kind of move a little bit every time you do it. So just come on, let's go. You can do it, little heroes. And one is stuck in the middle of the bridge, which is terrible. Normally if you do that, they'll all be up there waiting for you. But all right, this guy's going now, that's not too bad. I hope Clear Skies is actually equipped. Soon has some dialogue, we just skip that. And unfortunately, this guy's the worst guy to be delayed because then he delays them actually, like, talking. Oh, yeah, that didn't actually work. Gotta do it again. Oh, no, that didn't work. 
Come, come on. I'm blowing. There we go. All right. Thank you, heroes. And now this epic build-up to the final boss fight is just kind of blowing mist back and forth at each other. Thrilling gameplay right here, ladies and gentlemen. Fortunately, we do have something to speed up the last little bit. So I'm going to get into position here, because I know where Alduin's going to spawn after this. So after I do this last shout, I'm going to try to basically jump in front of Alduin as he spawns and shout him. And it's kind of easy to mess up. It's very tight. So we're just going to do our best. All right, here we go. He's going to appear over here. Get up. Get up. And we got him. All right, final fight time. Time will end when I actually deal the final blow. This, this fight is significantly easier just because you have the heroes, so you don't really have to worry. It's pretty hard to die. I'm getting hit by so many of the things. Oh. Wow. wow! So he's in the final position where you just need to poke him and he'll die. I've never died to the final fight. This is literally a Rexy moment. <laughs> Just do it again. It's fine. I don't know why you're all so worried. So the uh, <laughs> the fireballs falling from the sky are completely RNG, and I just happen to get like hit by so many of them. Normally, you don't even have to worry about what attacks he's doing. You just kind of whack him until he dies. I also didn't have the heroes help me whatsoever, but all right, here we go. Time. Shaking my dang head at myself. So, that's it. We beat the final boss. It's all of Skyrim. It's all of the anthology. We did all five games with any percent, except for Morrowind, which was all main quests. Did them all in a couple hours and something. I don't know. It was fast, right? Yep. Fast? It was good. So, we also had a donation sent up for a glitch showcase. And I don't know how much time I have, so I'm just going to keep going until they kick me off. <laughs> so, the first one we can actually do right now, uh, actually, I have a save for it. I'm going to need the help of good old Gormlaith. <laughs> okay. You, shout me. You need to... Okay, I need her to do Ice Breath Shout. I just need her to cooperate. This one should not take long, but she's not cooperative. What are you doing? Come on. I love AI. It's great. She just literally needs to do one attack, which she does like all the time. It's really rude. Let's try loading the save I had prepared for it. Maybe it'll go better. Fight. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Cormley. You gotta work with me here. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna try one more time. If she doesn't do it, I'll just move on. I got a lot of saves here, as you can see. Come on, baby. You can do it. She's just mad because I didn't marry her or something. No? That's really weird. Oh, she actually stopped. Normally it's like the first thing she does. She's just like, all right, shout immediately. Dang, this is a really good glitch. I'm really disappointed. All right, she doesn't even care about that. Moving on. <laughs> Sorry about that. This one for sure will work. So this is a really stupid glitch to actually implement, but if it did, it would be amazing for the speedrun, and you'll see why. So I'm in third person, and I'm currently over-encumbered. You can tell I can't currently run while I'm over-encumbered. I can also shout without any cooldown because of another glitch I did. Don't worry about it, but 
Uh, Skyrim is really weird with its saves, and it turns out you can actually like uh, carry things through saves. Like that's how the infinite sprint works. You kind of carry that saves that sprint state through. Uh, another thing you can do is your actual raw speed. So if I go like this and then quick load, I'm now Sanic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you go really, really stupidly fast. You can also go backwards, same speed. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really work well with like the first shout. You can kind of only go a little bit. And uh, unfortunately, it takes it needs to be over encumbered. Otherwise, you just kind of lose all your speed instantly. But I just wish I could actually implement this in a run. It would be so good. <laughs> and then you can just kind of like fly past people and uh, take them out instantly. Uh, uh, there we go. I got them. All right. What do I have next? All right. So you may be wondering why I didn't just like immediately leave Helgen and just go complete the main quest. Because like, here I am at the end of Helgen Cave where I'd make the save. My hands are currently bound. So obviously I can't like go third person. I can't interact with things. Uh, if I do enable player controls, then I can at least go through the yeah, PC. I can at least go third person. I can tell my hands aren't actually bound. That was kind of a total lie, but uh, clearly using the console is cheating. But even if I could just like enable player controls and move on, it's still not good enough. I'll still softlock when I get too far away, which uh, is probably the strangest softlock I've ever seen in an entire video game. I could do it in first person, but it's not nearly as interesting, so we're doing it in third. All right, I didn't die. Doing that fall in third person is really weird because I'm not used to it. So once you get too far away from Helgen and like close to another city, uh, something very, very... Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> oh, could somebody please lend me a hand? I need one. <laughs> and you can also enable player controls again, so that should fix it, right? <laughs> um. Oh, she's inside the wall. That's interesting. <laughs> That's also normal. Yep, I saw a dragon. Well, I have seen some serious stuff also. Uh, hi, Stump. That, yeah, that's, that's what happens if you try to leave Helgen too early. Uh, there's another glitch that you can kind of mess with your whole character, and it's great. This one might take a few tries because it's actually really precise. Uh, I think I got it. All right. So I didn't actually get on the horse, right? I'm currently kind of flying. That's not actually true. I'm the horse. <laughs> I am now a horse. I am going to continue on my merry horse adventure while my body just kind of leaves. It's all right. This is more important. I have embraced my true horse nature. Goodbye, body. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> also, the horse is invincible. It just doesn't care. Yeah. This, this glitch, uh, there's like two different things that can eventually happen. Either everything disappears and you completely soft lock, or you just kind of like warp back to your body. Uh, I think, oh, what's happening? This is new. All right, that's, oh, oh, there we go. I want to be a horse again. <laughs> All right, I guess we're not going to be a horse anymore. What else do I have here? Oh, this one's pretty, pretty good. So there's this, uh, this logging camp thing where you like place the logs on the thing and then you put it on and then it does the, the stuff. It's really a stupid little addition. But there's kind of something amazing that you can do here. Uh, these logs are going to disappear. That's how they like actually make it work. I'm going to try this. The timing is a little bit weird, so I'm currently ragdolling on it, and that was too early. So the horse body just kind of flipped over, <laughs> and my body is up here now, apparently. There's some magical, magical things that can happen here. This is really tight timing. I need to be ragdolling as the actual thing disappears. There we go. Oh, that was a <laughs> decent launch. All right, we're over here now. 
I'm fine. <laughs> you can actually get a launch like all the way. No, okay, so I need to wait just a little bit. Ah, it's the same launch. You can actually get launched like all the way up and land like on a mountain and your horse will go the opposite direction. <laughs> it's pretty great. But yeah, I'm fine. It's just a really silly thing here. Uh, I'm not gonna do those ones because they're kind of tedious. This one is pretty silly, you know, because the other ones weren't. Uh, here we have Yarrow Balgruff. He's one of those characters that's completely unkillable. Like, even if I console kill him, he just kind of like falls over. And it's really boring. Oh, he's talking to me. I don't care. But there's another thing I can do. Oh, there we go. So I have this spell called, uh, what is it? Uh, Reanimate Corpse. And it turns out if I use this on him correctly, oh, sorry, I need more magic, so let's just turn on god mode, don't worry about it. Oh, he's now a pile of ash. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, appropriately, we call this vaping, because they've been vaporized. It's completely worth this glitch. It doesn't really work on, like, most people, but for some reason, on Balgruff, it's, like, 100% consistent. It's really strange. So you may have noticed before when I had that character that could uh, sprint like crazy, there was this really stupid, um, what was I saying? Uh, the character that could, sp could sprint like crazy, they could also like just shout infinitely. And there's a really fun game that we can play in Whiterun. I like to call it Whiterun Golf. I'm going to need your help, please. Please come with me. See. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get this person over here. See if I can get a a nice goal. If you go over here. Uh uh yeah. Hey! <laughs> Come on. Ah, uh, didn't quite get it. Uh, there's one more I can show that I just need to restart the game because I need to have the DLC enabled. It's really fast. It's really dumb. It's probably my favorite one. So data files, I just need uh, draw Dragonborn. Alright, you're gonna get some Steve <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. Uh, this was found by DT Phase. Shout outs to him. It's the best contribution he has. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's a little weird. I'm gonna auto run towards this thing. And now there's an item from uh, Dragonborn called Net Jelly, which gives you paralysis. So I'm gonna fall over. And as I'm getting up, I'm going to read the Elder Scroll. And the Elder Scroll is pretty broken. Uh, this probably won't work because I'm not facing the horse. I actually have to like it get on the horse while this is happening. Yeah, so I'm just kind of stuck in place. The Elder Scroll does really stupid things. Let's try that again. Nope, not golf. This one is usually pretty easy. So, ingredients. This looks better. Yeah, this one. Bethesda's dad. Shout outs to Bethesda's dad. So, at some point, the game's gonna get really confused. Come on. I don't know what's happening right now. Oh, there it goes. Oh! <laughs> and we're out of here. <laughs> We can literally fly. You can, <laughs> you can kind of control yourself with the crouching. It's a little bit weird, but you know, it's like I'm, I'm stuck like this, right? There's no way I can fix this. Well, it turns out you can use more Netch Jelly. And now I'm free falling, but oh no, I'm free falling. This is terrible. There's no way I'm going to survive. Uh, well, it turns out Netch Jelly is really good. <laughs> and now I'm OK. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Skyrim, just being Skyrim. I hope you all enjoyed the Bethesda, well, the Elder Scrolls yeah. walk.
Because